Oh boy. God damn it. Wow. This was so much rougher and harder to watch. What's going on, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I just got done watching House Party 4 down to the last minute. I think that's what it's called. This movie came out in, well, according to HBO Max 2001, but when I googled it on Wikipedia, it says the year 2000. So, who fucking gives a shit, right? <laughs> it's one of those two years. This was co-written and directed by Chris Stokes. Alright, Chris Stokes, I have a tremendous beef with you going forward forever in time. Because I just got done watching one of, if not like the worst movie I've ever seen. This movie was bad. This movie was atrocious. And I don't just mean, because usually when I get on here and I say that a movie is bad or I say that it's terrible or I say that it's hard to watch, I do mean it. But I mean it on more of a different level. I mean it on like, sure, maybe the acting's bad or sure, maybe the writing's bad. But this movie everything was bad there was not one good thing not one good redeeming thing about this movie the, no good things exist for example we have our main character john john played by marcus houston now this was weird because marcus houston and the other two members of immature which is their real life group name right they were in House Party 3 as little kids. And so I figured when you see the poster of House Party 4 and they're on the cover of it, I'm thinking to myself, okay, as much as I didn't care for them in House Party 3, I guess now those characters have grown up. I mean, they're playing themselves, really, a version of themselves. And we'll now follow them. Or we'll now see them. No, they're playing different, completely different characters, new characters. Why? Why weren't they just the same characters from House Party 3? There's no good reason other than, I don't know, Chris Stokes wanted to write some lame-ass, horrible attempt at a House Party remake, essentially. Marcus Houston, I'm not going to say he's a bad actor because I have seen him in things. I'm mostly thinking of Sister Sister, right, as Roger. Like, you know that he can be funny or he can be charming or he can be whatever. Maybe it's because he's a side character in that show or maybe it's just because of how that was developed. I don't know because here he is so one note. He is so generic. He is so nothing, like just nothing of a character. His character, he's also unlikable. If I were to have any emotional feeling towards him, I would say that he's unlikable because at the very beginning, he's faking being sick so that he doesn't have to go to school. And look, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I'm some saint. I'm not going to pretend like when I was younger, I didn't pretend to be sick so that I could stay home from school. It's not just that, but he's doing it because, well, originally his sister was supposed to be house-sitting for the uncle. And the uncle has this nice big house. I guess he's rich. I don't know what he does. And and But in faking being sick, Marcus Houston gets to be the one to house sit. So the sister misses out on it. Now the whole movie consists of Marcus Houston pretending to be sick, coughing, fake coughing. Whenever somebody calls him to check on him, he has to pretend to be sick. And it's just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat over and over again. And I'm like, there is nothing to this guy. There is nothing interesting about him at all other than the fact that he's just kind of a dick. And so not just that, he gets his two friends, the other members of the immature group, who when I praised Kid and Play for their acting... I mean, I wasn't trying to say that they were going to be Oscar-winning actors, right? But for what those movies were, they were good. They were likable. They were something that you felt comfortable presenting on screen in the theater. 
these guys suck and I'm not going to beat them up too hard or attack them too hard because they're not actors and so clearly it's one of those things where they were thrust into a situation if it was me I would do the movie too right so it's like I'm not going to beat them up too much but they are so bland they are so generic like they had potential or they had scenarios where they could have really built up their their roles or they could have played them up to be more of the funny sidekick like group but no there's nothing here it's so lifeless it's so uh, the script is atrocious and so okay so they come to the house and they're trying to help him get a house party together right they're 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 getting the food they're getting the drinks they're getting all this and that and then Marcus Houston realizes that, oh, wait, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> so let me call the school to pretend to be her mother. And, of course, they're just not going to let the daughter leave school without a parent there to pick her up. So Marcus Houston has to dress up like an old woman, which it's obvious that it's him. I, I mean, if you want to make the school look completely incompetent, then here you go. They actually let this girl leave the school with this obvious man and not just an obvious man but an obvious student of the school you should be able to recognize him this was awful it was clearly an attempt at comedy by having him dress like a woman and this predates Medea. so I, I i was just trying to figure out like where are we going here oh no this was just i guess chris stokes idea of hey this is funny right he's in a dress he's he's putting on a funny voice and he's doing all this stuff no it's not not funny at all and the girlfriend i should mention if you want to talk about actors or actresses that should not be in this movie that deserve much better that are too good to be in a movie like this megan good plays the girlfriend what in the blue hell is megan good doing here seriously what is she doing here uh, uh, fire your agent i know this was over 20 years ago but still you did not belong here thankfully she went on to have a much better career it's not like this is the only thing that she ever has been in and she was very attractive <laughs> the movie clearly knew that her attractiveness was something to show off speaking of actresses that are too good to be in this movie the sister Marcus Houston's sister, the character's sister, is Monique. She's played by Alexis Fields. And I instantly recognize this, this actress from when I was a kid. I used to love Keenan and Kel. In fact, she's been in a lot of things uh, growing up, I remember seeing. So this was rough. This was rough to see her have to try to make this material work, have to try to do something with this where she's going back and forth trying to prove that her brother is faking being sick and she's trying to convince the mom and the mom doesn't believe her yada yada speaking of other i actually like the actors that play them the mom and the father but once again wasted uh talent the uncle who marcus houston is house sitting for the uncle is taking his wife and his mom on a trip and he decides to use the gay airwaves plane I, I don't really get the joke. Like, are they trying to say that the uncle is secretly gay because he always uses this airline? Or was it just an excuse to have gay characters as the stewardess and as the flight attendants and just have a horrible attempt? Again, Chris Stokes, this is bottom of the barrel. No, this is below the barrel. This is underneath the dog shit on the ground type level of humor here and not just that you have this random side plot of apparently a serial killer has escaped and like there's a newspaper that the wife looks at and it's a missing serial killer person a drawing and then this random guy goes up to the mom and puts something in her drink to make her drowsy but then they just find the mom and then they end up saying, fuck it, we're just going to go back home. So they get a cab. And what do you know? The cab driver is that same serial killer. And you have this whole thing where the guy's acting crazy and acting weird and talking about a talking dog. And then they figure out that he's the missing serial killer. So then they run out of the, uh, the cab. And then the guy starts to chase them. 
and then you literally cut from them running away from the guy. Like, the guy's right behind them as they're running away. And they cut to, oh, now the three characters, the uncle, the mother, the wife, now they're just in the cousin's plane. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? So what happened to the serial killer? What happened to you were just being chased? How did you lose him? How, like, what happened here? I know this budget is almost nothing. There's no budget to speak of. Uh, but but uh, you just can't do that. You can't transition from scenes like that and expect us to just not care. And and they don't even show who the cousin is that is helping them with the plane. Who knows who that is? This is so badly put together. This is so badly edited together. Again, this makes me feel bad for every other rant of a movie that I've ever done. Not to say that I still don't dislike whatever movies those are but this is such a different level of bad filmmaking this is just a different level of this movie does not deserve to see the light of day why does hbo max have this movie on their service who the hell besides dumb dumb me who was doing this series would watch this i i, I can't was this in theaters my god jesus if this was in theaters also, you have a moment when Marcus Houston, he's trying to call a bunch of people to come to the party because he, he wants to throw a big epic party. And even Megan Good says to him, like, why do you want to do this party? Like, why? And he just goes, well, I just want to be remembered for something. That's the level of deepness that we have. And he calls a bunch of people and says, hey, Puff Daddy. Hey, Missy Elliott. Destiny's Child. Mace. And he's naming all these people. And I'm like, oh shit, are we going to get some some cameos? No, no way in this cheap ass movie. But in the moment, I said, well, at least we'll have some good music to, to come up later. And then he says R. Kelly's name. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Never mind. Please don't come. I don't want to see anybody, any little girls getting peed on. But none of them show up, of course. So you just had that scene where he's calling people. And either he's so lame that he couldn't get them. But they don't even reference it. It's not even like he said, oh, shucks, they never came. It's just, it was just a dumb moment that, like, I guess was supposed to get people's hopes up. Even the music that they play later on, like, for the soundtrack at the party is lame as hell. It's probably all just immature music. And their music is not that good. I'm sorry. I've never been an immature fan, if any of those exist. And not just that, not just the, the actual music like that. The score for this movie is like, I swear they found the easiest, cheapest, non copywritten score music that they could find. And they just copied and paste, applied to this movie because a lot of it doesn't match up. A lot of it doesn't really, it's just like, oh, here's some random goofy music of while the teacher, Mrs. Toupee, comes to the house to check if. Marcus Houston's really sick. I could go on and on all day long, seriously, about how bad this movie is. Chris Stokes, the director, who I've name-dropped a few times, he even shows up in this horrible role where he's playing this guy that's going to fix the car because something happened to the uncle's car. And he comes by and he says, I'll fix your car if you let my two daughters come to the party and have a good time. And it's these two fat-ass ugly looking girls and if you're wondering oh man that's pretty harsh to talk about two women like that they're not two women they're two fat dudes who who they put in drag and wigs and pretend to be women because again chris stokes has this weird fetish even more than tyler perry for men dressing up like women so yeah Fuck this movie. Fuck it up its ass. I never want this movie referenced or mentioned or brought up ever again. They had the nerve to have Marcus Houston and Alexis Fields actually look into the camera at the end and say, Sequel! Fuck you. You're not getting a sequel. There never would be a sequel. And I damn sure wouldn't have watched it. God damn it. Ooh, boy, what the hell is happening in the world? 
Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you even knew that House Party 4 existed. Have you seen it? How much do you think it sucks as well? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. <sighs> Later.